This is one of the more popular uh, videos of the last season. Um, I've got a ton of questions to get through, so I'm just going to rip right into it. Oh, sorry, just before I rip right into it, uh, the basic idea was I ran this laptop, I also did this laptop um, off 20 AA batteries. Yes, it's possible there's some risks involved. Those are very real risks. Um, actually, I'll just quickly touch on that now. Um, so, uh, I did this with laptops that it wasn't a big deal if I blew them up. Um, one of the people that uh, emailed me in, he used his mum's laptop rather than uh, his own because his own was downloading something at the time. Um, I used to thought, I'm not quite sure you're really taking this seriously enough. Uh, but uh, So just understand that the risks are real. Um, he later had, had an accident and uh, blew one of his other devices, but he was lucky with his mum's laptop. So uh, uh, all's well or then's well. Okay, so uh, quickly, I just need to um, go over milliamps, voltage, amperage, how you add them together, how all that type of stuff. So quickly, what they are. Milliamp hours is um, how much power is stored inside the battery. We'll come back to that more in, in a moment on how you how you deal with it. Um, amps. Um, actually, no, we'll come. We'll go to volts first. Um, so very often the analogy is used with water. Um, so you say uh, volts is sort of how much punch something has. So the higher it up, higher something, higher the water is, um, the faster it's going to hit the ground. Therefore, more kick it's got when it hits the ground. Amps is how much water is coming down. So if you have one bucket versus ten buckets, that's quite a lot of difference in power, even though they're falling from the same height. So how much power you have is um, usually measured in watts and that is a combination of the amps and the volts. Now depending on whether you're looking at AC or DC, the way you calculate is, that is very slightly different. Um, but the idea is the same. It's the combination of how high that waterfall is and how much water is coming down it which gives you how much power you're working with. Um, so you could have a very low waterfall that's got a lot of water coming down and that could have the equivalent amount of power of a very high waterfall that's got just a little bit of water coming down. Hopefully that makes sense. Now milliamp hours. Milliamp hours is if you are draining the battery at um, a certain amount, so we'll say one amp, um, no we'll say one milliamp, um, then if you drain that um, battery at one milliamp, um, how many hours would it take for um, that battery to go flat or the other way around of if you drained all that battery's power in one hour how many milliamps would it uh, would you be drawing in that time um, so the batteries which I've been using um, they range between 2000 to 2500 that brings me to the first point uh, one of the common problems that I had from people emailing in was that um, they were trying to mix all sorts of different types of batteries. Um, I appreciate why you want to do this because I know it's sort of uh, 20 AA batteries is a lot of batteries, they're expensive, um, but uh, if you start mixing the batteries then they start performing unevenly so you'll get some batteries which will charge which will discharge faster than others you'll get some which are capable of delivering a lot of current you'll get some which aren't capable of delivering much current and they'll all work to the abilities of the least able battery um, not only that, but you can also do damage to the batteries. If they're rechargeable batteries, that gets expensive. Uh, if you're doing this with non-rechargeable batteries, you probably need to think twice because uh, that's going to get even more expensive very quickly and it's not very good for the environment. Uh, uneven drain. Oh, now I'll just quickly while we're at there. Um, if you do have to use uneven batteries, try and get um, so you're going to need more than one, so here we go, here is uh, 10 batteries um, that are in series, yes, in series, um, but that, that gives us the right voltage, but it doesn't give us enough amperage to actually get the laptop started, which means that we have to put on another set of 10, and that's where I got the 20 from. Now, if you need to use uneven batteries, then try and get the sides as even as possible. So um, there's two different mentalities to this. 
you could get this side and this side both sort of with equivalent batteries in each one so therefore the two sides are going to remain even. Uh, the advantage of doing this is you're less likely to get the batteries starting to sort of fight each other and sort of try charging each other and do all sorts of nasty stuff uh, but you're not going to get anywhere near the potential of what the batteries are capable of if your batteries are uneven. Now another way of doing it is that you put all your weak batteries say in this one and all your strong batteries in this one and then uh, both of them will go to the best of their abilities but when the batteries start getting low then that's when you're going to start getting all this fighting happening which means that either you have to stop using it uh, very early on when it starts running down or you could put in some circuit protection like some diodes and I did start making a version 2 of this quite a while back I never actually finished it but that actually had some diodes in there so it could actually be loaded up that way uh, right, so that's that one covered. We'll just pop that one down. Moving on. Uh, okay, so uh, I mentioned before milliamp hours, amps, and volts. How do we add them together? So, <clears throat> to get more volts, we put more batteries in series. So, we're putting the batteries this way. Okay, to get more amps, we're putting them um, in parallel. So, we're putting them this way. Um, don't use this as an example because these are actually going woo 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 um, as we go along. So they, these are actually series even though they're sitting beside each other. Um, now uh, milliamp hours, we do it um, adding the batteries side by side. So if we are putting them in series, it has no effect on the milliamp hours. It's only affecting the voltage. Uh, covered. Socket versus the battery pack. Okay, so the way I did it um, on this one here is um, I went into the bit, um, the bit at the back where the uh, AC power plugs in. My reasoning for doing that was um, it's very simple. It meant that I could use an existing battery, which meant that if I was out camping somewhere. Um, I could use the existing battery just to give it that little kick to get it started, and then I could sustain the things on double A's. Uh, one of the big disadvantages of that is that your power saving settings, um, the laptop will think it's running off the mains and so therefore it, the power saving settings it will choose will be the ones for the mains, so you need to configure those accordingly. Um, I have uh, seen people on YouTube who have actually wire, rewired the battery pack itself and then run uh, AA's or size D's or all sorts of different things. Um, they've, uh, yes, yeah, so they've powered it via the battery pack. Um, the advantage of that is, uh, once again, the power saving chooses the appropriate option, so therefore um, you get some advantages that way. Um, yeah, I've, I've covered that. Uh, uneven batteries, I've covered that. Uh, okay, now, um, car battery inverter. Uh, one person I was talking to used an inverter combined with a car battery. Um, and uh, he then sort of went on to sort of use that, uh, use double A's with that inverter. Now, um, he had a couple of reasons for doing this. Um, one, he decided that it was quite efficient because even when the bat car battery was running low and the car could no longer start from it, he was still able to power the laptop fine from it. Um, that's sort of true. Uh, when I say sort of true, because uh, quite possibly the internal laptop battery may have been taking over, or the laptop itself was already going, and so therefore um, sustaining the running of the laptop actually takes a lot less power than starting it up. Um, so just just bear that in mind. The inverter is actually a fairly they're getting much better these days, but it's still not as efficient as connecting it directly. Now, the other reason that he chose for using the inverter was that uh, just that whole sort of circuit protection thing that um, you know that uh, um, the inverter is simply going to go or it's not going to go. Um, there's not much grey area in there, and so therefore um, it's much cheaper to blow the inverter than it is to blow the laptop. So he had some really good logic right there. I will come back to this. Okay, uh, money. Um, this is not a hack that you do to save money. This is a hack that you do uh, for the sake of doing something cool. It's not practical, it's not cheap. Uh, hopefully that's understood now. Um, 
Solar panels. Um, yeah, one of the guys mentioned the possibility of uh, using solar panels. Um, if you're going to do that, you really need to go via a battery. Something like a small lead acid battery would do you quite well there. Um, there's lots of other different batteries with different pros and cons. and um, Like you could use a LiPo battery, but then you need to start paying a fair bit of care into um, managing the LiPo battery. Uh, yeah, but something like a lead acid battery, you can really be nasty to them and they keep on giving and giving. Uh, as long as you don't run them completely flat. The, oh, uh, on solar panels. If you're going to look into solar panels, have a look. Um, there's some new ones out now. Um, they're coming down in price a whole lot and they're getting a whole lot more efficient. There's uh, some that are around sort of 65 watts or so. There's bigger ones as well, but the 65 watt ones uh, get into the level where they're actually getting really viable to power your laptop for a while because you could, uh, your laptop will be somewhere around that level, some use a bit less, like um, my little uh, triple E thing here that uses, I think it idles around 6 watts and it charges at about 18 to 20, something like that, it uses stuff all, so 65 watts would be overkill for that, something like this I think 65 would be much closer. Um, some laptops use more than that, I've seen some which use around 90 or so, uh, I'm sure there's ones that use even more. Uh, now if you're using one that uses more than what your solar panel can produce, just make sure you've got a big battery to compensate for it. Use a big battery to compensate for it, so you can just leave the thing charging while you're not using the laptop, um, and uh, yeah, come back and you should, you should get several hours out of it. I mentioned the risks just earlier on, I've just got a note there, but this is my original note before I went and looked at all the questions. Um, it's really important to try and match the voltage and the amperage as closely as you can. Um, the golden rule which I've been using and that has worked well for me but isn't necessarily right, how's that for a disclaimer, um, is to go a little bit above what the battery um, is because the battery will be, like this one here, the battery is 11.1 volts or something like that. Um, and the power supply is something like about uh, 19 or 21 volts. Uh, those numbers will vary quite a lot depending on which laptop you have. But the general gist of it is that your battery is a smallish number and your power supply will be a biggish number, often almost double it. Um, so what I aim for is to get the voltage just a little bit above um, the, what the battery is. So this battery is, uh, so the battery that's in this is 11.1ish. I aimed for 12, so that's 10 1.2 volt rechargeable batteries. Uh, and then I just concentrate on getting the amperage enough to actually sustain the laptop, to get it started and sustain it. On a side note, um, I'm not going to dedicate a show to this one you see, so I'll just bung it in here. Um, one of the guys also mentioned that he had powered a phone off some AA batteries. Um, he used four um, AA batteries to power his phone. Now, uh, double check what the voltage is of the battery of your phone. It's almost definitely 3.7 volts, in which case you want three rechargeable 1.2 volt batteries, not four. Four will give you 4.8 volts and you want 3.7. Three will give you 3.6 volts. So you need three batteries, not four. Three, not four. Important. <laughs> um, I think that's all that uh, we have time for in this show. Um, so uh, that about does us for this episode.